Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today for a career journey, getting the big picture from talent experience micro moments. I'm Raquel Lawrence, marketing manager here at Smashfly, part of Symphony Talent. And I'm so glad you could all be part of today's conversation along with our experts, Cornerstone On Demand's principal consultant on talent analytics, Jennifer Burnett, as well as Symphony Talent's own recruitment marketing strategist and employer brand advisor, Shannon Seary. Before we get started, just a few announcements and housekeeping items. First, today's session will be recorded and a link to the recording and slides will be sent to your inbox by the end of this week. Based on GoToWebinar's default settings, you're currently listening in using your computer speaker system, but if you prefer to join over the phone, please select phone call in the audio pane to the right of your screen and the dial-in information will be displayed. After the presentation, we'll leave about 10 minutes for Q&A, so you can submit your questions anytime throughout the webinar using the questions pane in the control panel to the right of your screen. Lastly, don't forget to say hi on Twitter. You can tweet us at Smashfly anytime throughout the webinar. We'd love to hear from you. So during today's session, you'll get all the tips and best practices you need uh, in order to, oh, if we can go to the next slide. Great. So here's the agenda for today. Um, so you'll get all the tips and best practices you need to leverage personalization techniques in order to capture candidate attention, engage and communicate at a micro individual level. We'll also identify all the key moments of influence through all career stages before and after the hire and closely examine candidate information processing and decision making. Then we'll wrap it all up with the results how you measure the effects of positive and negative interactions on applicant conversion, and ultimately talent retention. So now without further ado, I'm very happy to welcome our two speakers for today, Shannon Seary and Jennifer Burnett. Hey everybody, nice to be here today. Thank you, Raquel. Hey, Jennifer. <laughs> hey, Shannon. And also welcome to everyone. Glad you could join us today. Um, and we have a, a lot of great information to share with you today, um, you know, sort of painting the big picture as well as some very practical and um, actionable items for you to, um, to take away as well. So, um, and as, as Raquel said, we welcome your questions along the way. Um, but I'd like to start by just talking about what's happening in the broader environment. And as many of you are probably experiencing yourselves, you can see how much work has changed um, in the last few years. So with uh, primarily a drive uh, uh, influenced by the rapid advance of digital technology, um, we're really seeing changes in um, the people, what they're doing, their purpose, and also how they're doing it. So. Um, all of these changes have really created new jobs, the way people work together. For example, we've seen the rise of the gig economy and virtual workplaces have become much more commonplace. We're also seeing societal shifts across all generations, but people continue to seek um, employers that have similar values. They still want that work-life balance, but they're also looking for purpose and meaning in work. And of course, the way that we all interact with each other and of course, within our work environment has changed too. So certainly the rise of mobile technologies, social media and video have really accelerated these shifts. So given this rapid pace of change um, for businesses and for individuals, we're really seeing an impact on skill sets for both current and emerging jobs across really all industries. So if we're seeing those skills demand change uh, at an aggregate level, you can only imagine how much those changing skill requirements are within individual jobs and occupations. And we're seeing that um, really have a profound effect. So I want to share some numbers with you that really help to illustrate uh, this, larger, this larger change. Um, these are from many different sources, but let me walk you through them. So, um, first of all, six out of 10 millennials, the U.S. workforce's largest generation right now, say that they're looking for new employment opportunities. That's quite a few. And 42% of them say that 
they are looking to leave their current employer if they're not learning enough in that current role. However, even though we often think of this generation as sort of constantly job hunting, um, there's another survey by Best Places to Work where um, these uh, millennials also said, you know, actually I would rather stay with my organization, again, as long as I feel like there's opportunity that I'm learning and growing and developing. And that was the majority of, of the people who responded. But also the reality is in 2019, we saw a continuing rising trend of volunteer, voluntarily, people voluntarily leaving their, their jobs. So this is often represented in quit rates that we see on the Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers. And many think that this is because there's quite a bit of confidence among workers, you know, confidence that they're really um, calling the shots when if <laughs> most of the time they are, and that they want to look for the best opportunity. So these numbers, the 4.5 million who actually quit their job in August and an average of about 3.5 million per month throughout 2019 is the highest that we've seen since 2001. Um, at the same time, um, we're hearing from employers, though, and this is, has been a consistent message, that they're struggling really to fill open positions. Um, this number ranges anywhere from 50 to 80 uh, percent, but employers are saying, I'm having trouble filling roles, and I'm having trouble filling them quickly, especially within um, the first 30 days. And many attribute this to the skills divide, the skills gap that we're seeing in the workforce. So um, it is a high priority for, for CEOs and for executives in organizations. And the um, helping to identify ways to, to close that gap, as well as to meet the needs of individuals seeking jobs and finding the right people, um, you know, is really what we want to talk about today. So all of these changes, um, you know, really reflect that people are approaching their careers differently. And this is across all generations. So we tend to see that people are really seeking opportunities, not just jobs. They also expect to have multiple careers over their lifetime, including taking breaks from work, taking time off, or perhaps working part-time. Um, and again, this is across both genders and, and different age groups as well. When asked what they really are seeking, money and security, so at the top of the list, much like it has been over decades, but that might be defined differently today than it was 10 or 20 years ago, and it's important for us to understand that. And same with the work-life balance. Um, that also is being defined differently and really blurring the lines between getting that balance, not only in your personal life, but also at work, and that there's there's not as clear of a distinction that um, the idea of mindfulness and wellness certainly has um, come to the forefront um, today. So when we think about how all these changes are impacting our organization, um, we often put that in the category of, as, as organizational leaders, how we manage talent. So everything from talent acquisition to learning, performance, succession, um, but talent management has typically been defined more as a process. And um, we know that the expectations of people have changed, how they view their career and their role in the organization has changed. So we must also consider what this whole experience looks like from their perspective. So we're really proposing that you have to look at both the talent management side, which is more company or process oriented, and the talent experience side, which tends to be more employee or people oriented. And it tends to look more like a journey rather than a process. Um, and at Cornerstone, what we've identified is that looking at processes and tools, typical talent management steps from the employee's perspective, is not just about thinking about their ease of use of technology or their, their user experience, but it is truly about the journey, decisions that they're making, experiences that they're having throughout their work life and throughout their complete career. It's actually quite complex and yet sometimes simple at the same time. So for example, a, comp a company may think of the talent management priorities as attracting top talent, moving with speed and agility, retaining their best people and doing it efficiently and in a cost-effective way. 
where people from a talent experience perspective are thinking more about continuously developing, always learning. Um, they want to be seen and included. They want to understand where they stand in their um, role in the organization and their career, and they want their work life simplified. So um, all of these things uh, we believe can and should come together. Um, one of our leaders at Cornerstone, I think, has really described this this merging of talent management and talent experience really well. Because when we think about um, the, this is really the employee experience with employee journey. And Mike Bollinger describes it as, employee journey is made up of a series of micro moments throughout the person's life with their employer. Their experience is how people perceive their own personal journey. And their talent experience is a mindful and conscious effort to ensure that those micro moments in that personal employee journey are met with the greatest impact. So when we think about that talent experience from a leadership and organizational perspective, um, it's not only the personal journey they're going through, but the, there is an opportunity here for, for you all as leaders in your organization to really make an impact and affect the outcomes that are important to us as organizational leaders, like attracting the right people, maximizing their impact and productivity, engaging talent um, and and of course improving retention and helping them grow and develop in the organization so in the end this is really important for us to keep in mind as we talk through this today that ultimately we are thinking about the impact on the organization and the impact on the individual so when we think about what people want as mike said we start to think about what are called moments that matter. So um, this allows us to think through uh, the talent experience at both a personal and an interpersonal level. So there are many, many different moments that gradually build and sustain that relationship between a person, between your employees, and the organization and the employers. And at Cornerstone, we're very interested and curious about defining those moments a little bit better. Because the more we can define them and identify them as HR, talent management, organizational leaders, the more you'll be able to influence your workforce um, in those critical moments, those defining events, and you'll be able to do it much more intentionally. Um, there are many of these different moments throughout the employee journey, and they may not be as obvious as, as you think. But as we're digging a little bit deeper and investigating um, these micro moments a little bit more, I just wanted to share with you today, very, very high level, some of the initial things that we've identified. And then um, we're going to go a little bit deeper into these when we talk about um, specifically the talent acquisition process and the candidate experience as well. So one thing that we've noticed early in our research as we start to talk to people, gather information about these different phases and defining events in their careers, and thinking about um, what has been the factors that impact their reaction to that. So some of those might come from the organization, their manager, other people, perhaps even technology. So we're starting to find some patterns in the way in which um, um, people respond. So any time in their career when someone's seeking a new opportunity, changing their job, uh, moving within the organization, there seems to be this thought process that people go through that we are referring to as awareness, reflection, connection, and action. And these don't necessarily take place in any kind of linear fashion, uh, but they do seem to be present together as, as a person moves through that personal journey at work and creates motivation for them to think differently about their career. So I'm just gonna quickly walk through these. So awareness is that part of the person's investigation and curiosity that they're experiencing. So they're looking at their values, their goals, whether they feel like they're capable of moving in a new direction or performing the role even that they're currently in. And there's some balance between whether they feel like their current situation is aligned or not aligned with their value and goals and those of the organization. And then that usually creates some level of reflection. In other words, they start asking, am I okay with this? Um, 
am how am I how am I feeling about this? There's usually typically some more emotion that becomes part of this process as well. They might experience some anxiety about their career or the opposite. They may feel very confident in their career. Um, but reflection often allows them to process that information and, and eventually think through, is this the time to make a change? What direction do I go? The next part would be connection. And I think we cannot really um, um, overlook the importance of connection. And again, especially as we think of the talent acquisition process or any step in their career. Um, so when you think about attracting candidates to your organization, um, we know we're in a very connected world. There's lots of information available to them. We're gonna talk a little bit about, of course, again, how technology has advanced uh, dramatically and even strengthened those connections and help people find information, find each other in new kinds of ways. But there are also the very personal um, connections with colleagues, with family, with friends, with communities that people still place a very high importance on as they move through these steps. And then finally, action. This could be a small action, a large action, but what we're really interested in is what really motivates someone to take that action. And um, as we think about the talent acquisition process as well, again, think of it from the perspective of the individual, from the candidate, and what really motivates them to take that next step. So, um, as we um, dig into the candidate experience a little bit more, let's, we want to keep some of this, this process in mind, their awareness, their reflection, their connection, and the actions that they take as they move that candidate journey forward. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the, that candidate journey and that candidate experience. Uh, so, you want yeah. to, I was going to say we can, I think that everything that you've talked about so far has been fascinating in terms of like setting this up in terms of what it means when we think about it from a talent acquisition and from a candidate perspective and all of those, you know, kind of micro moments and, you know, what, what are we actually talking about before someone even comes on board, um, before you're really there as an employer to truly impact their life every day, you know, kind of thinking through what are all of those moments that are going to matter um, beforehand that are even kind of leading up to it. Um, and I love your, your concept um, that you've got here at the top around, you know, awareness and the connection and the reflection because we often we talk about this in a very similar way in terms of like talent acquisition and attracting candidates in those same the those micro moments tend to happen kind of within these same kind of buckets of the moment of when somebody might become aware of you as an employer or what kind of information what might connect somebody to a company and make them feel engaged and make them want to learn more um, and then I think most importantly that time of reflection of where someone's trying to make a decision as to whether or not this is something that they want for their life and would be a fit for their life for this moment in time and their specific situation and scenario you know all the way down obviously to being able to take action so I think this model fits really well um, around the the candidate journey too it's perfect sense mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I know, Shannon, you're going to elaborate on this because as an employer, I think it's important for, for um, us to remember that you can influence all these steps. That's the, the, the goal of really understanding that talent experience is um, how you identifying those, being aware of those, of what people are, are sort of going through in that journey. But... Um, not only can you influence them, you really should intentionally influence them in order to really attract and hire the right people for your organization. So yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more specifically, Shannon? And yeah, that's, I think that that's, that's really the right way to think about it, that if you want, if you want to think about the, the touch points as we would kind of think about them or the experiences that are going to influence a candidate on their journey, um, it's often really helpful to lay it out a, a little bit like the way that, that you see it on, on the screen. 
Um, and if you take a look, I think a lot of our clients and a lot of companies out there, if they took take a look at the information that they're tracking today or that they're able to get around where they're acquiring applications or the sources of their hire, um, and they, they try to backtrack to say, okay, what was our candidate journey like? Um, often what they might see is that they're really only getting access to a single tactic. Um, if we look at the visual that's up here, like for example, an Indeed sponsored job, that might show up as like that very last thing that they're able to track and see before somebody took that action of actually applying for the job. Um, but that doesn't tell the story because look at everything that is behind the Indeed sponsored job, right? I mean, there were all of these touch points that, that happened prior to that very last thing that actually led to somebody taking that action. And so there are all of these moments and all of these touch points where someone is gaining awareness of you as an employer that they're potentially, hopefully, becoming engaged, right? So before a person actually converts to an applicant, there are a bunch of other touch points that will help create those moments that matter for candidates as they move from being you know more and more aware of your company as an employer to starting to actively consider specific positions or opportunities um, typically what we see in research around this is that there are somewhere between 14 to 18 touch points or interactions with a company before a candidate actually applies um, so it's certainly not just that one last one, you know, 14 to 18. Um, and if we even start at the low number of like 14, a lot of times, you know, what you want to try to think about is do you, with confidence, if you want to, if you're thinking through your candidate journey, do you know what those other 13 touch points were? You can probably guess what some of them were. Um, but you don't necessarily know. You can probably guess that they interacted with your career website, um, but you know, in terms of all of the other touch points, you might not necessarily know what they are. And so if you don't, that's kind of the first step um, when we start talking about influence and what's going to influence um, or be influential in, the, in those moments. I think really the first step would be ensuring that you know what that journey is um, and that you're able to, to target kind of your right candidate audience so that, you know, when they're in one of those, those moments that you're offering up the best information possible to help move them along, to help them feel connected, to help them reflect on whether or not this is a good decision for their life and then take action. Um, you know, typically, and you can see a lot of it in the visual here, um, but typically some of the most important touch points um, are, of course, a company's career website, sort of their home of their employer brand in a way. Um, any of the, the content that they might put out, say, on social media that they might be sharing around their culture, um, photos, uh, information that they might be sending out via um, email on a regular basis, um, and even information that candidates will find in review sites like Glassdoor and Indeed. Um, you know, though that kind of information out there really ends up becoming influential. Um, and I think what's interesting today, when we when we reflect on this from the candidate journey perspective, um, is that today we're able to really virtually track everything. So there isn't really a reason why you only need to know kind of the last thing that somebody did before they applied. You can actually track the, the full path tech allows that to allows us to do that today um, so that you know we can have real data that tracks somebody all the way back that can help power our decision making one around understanding kind of all of those touch points and then trying to figure out what is the right information to be putting in front of someone at those touch points so that we can give them a positive moment um, and kind of help move them along in their in their decision making path um, you like today's tech allows you to track everything, you know, like digital banners, any kind of media that you want to run, um, text campaigns, any of your paid or your organic Google traffic, for example. Um, really, in short, just any everything can can really be tracked today. And by doing so, you can understand what those influencers are and kind of, again, the kind of information that you need to, to put out there in order to really help somebody um, in their journey. And if we think about, if you want to go ahead and go on to the next two slides, let's kind of think more about influencing that candidate journey. So fine, even if you can track someone's path, 
um, and we start to understand all of those, you know, 14 to 18 touch points that are that a, a person is interacting with. Even once you you understand that, the the next phase is really making sure that you actually understand your your candidate, right? So candidate perceptions of an employer and a company that they're they're thinking about going to to work with they're it's shaped with every single one of those those touch points the the media the information on the website information out on social media um, and in order to influence people it it really requires that you've got at each one of those touch points really highly relevant personalized messaging Right, because what's what's going to make somebody move from just being aware of a company to feeling connected and engaged with a company um, is that they feel like the company is is aligned to them and aligned to what they're seeking in their career and in their life. And so, if you want to really in, influence someone's decision making, you have to under you have to make sure that you understand the person and that you're putting out the the kind of information that's going to help them feel connected and help them feel engaged, help them feel understood, and help them feel like it's a match that what they want for their life is aligned to you know what the company's goals are as well. Um, and so it has has to be highly personalized. It has to really speak to kind of the, the individual today um, so that someone, it becomes more and more um, open to your employment opportunities. So one of the, the things that we do in terms of looking to be able to, to understand the, the audience better is we use a tool um, that is called a persona. Right, so it's just an it's a candidate profile essentially that we use, um, and it's a tool that we develop as a way to be able to figure out how to target um, any kind of media that's out there and how to really think through the different ways that specific candidates, or in this case, a specific persona, um, would actually interact with your brand. So we call this exercise kind of persona development, and the entire purpose is just to get a deeper understanding of the candidates you're trying to attract. And it creates a tool that will describe the candidate. It literally puts a name and a face to the target audience, right? So in this instance, we have a persona, and we just just one here as an example, in, in Lisa. Um, and in developing the persona around Lisa, then we can use this to, as we're developing messages, we're developing stories about what it's like to work for the company, what our mission and values are, what our culture is like, what specific jobs are like, we can actually use this persona um, as a tool to be able to run any content that we put out there kind of against that persona to say, do, well, does this information resonate with this person? Would it engage Lisa? Would it engage her as a person where she is in her life, her specific situation? And I think kind of most importantly, right, again, around that, that area of reflection, does this help Lisa make a career decision? Does it, does it help her with where she is in her life make a decision as to whether or not this is a company that she should consider and you know potentially uh, apply for a job for and go work for? Um, so in the example we have up, this is a really simple example of a persona, but the what you can get out of it is just understanding that um, she is 35, you know, a woman who lives in LA. Um, she is a married mother of um, some young school age children. Uh, she is mid level in in her career. Um, she's bilingual. She's fluent in Spanish. Um, she's very active online, as we all are. Uh, her kids play soccer. She's also studying for her MBA, and she loves to run marathons. Uh, I was joking earlier that I think we all want to be Lisa because <laughs> she seems to be very accomplished. But the the point of it is really, again, to lay out a persona as an individual, as a real person, to then be able to use that as a tool to say, how is the messaging that Lisa is going to come up against in these different moments? What, How is that going to resonate with her? If I was Lisa, what is the information that's going to make her stop and hopefully pay attention, right? To even become aware of an organization, that kind of first moment that matters. Um, what What's the kind of information that once she's aware of the organization that's going to make her feel engaged and connected? What's gonna make her want to potentially learn more, to dig in, to maybe sign up for our talent community so that she can stay in touch and maybe get job alerts or 
or get you know just um, updated blog posts, right? Any kind of content and information that we that we want to put out there. And then what's the what's the kind of information that we need to put in front of Lisa that's going to help her reflect on whether or not she's going to be a good fit for the organization and ultimately do that take that final step and and take action, right? And actually apply. So personas are a little bit geeky in kind of the marketing world, but really just think of it as like a sample candidate profile. And this is something that you can develop across all of your um, hiring areas, your different career levels. It's something that you can build over time. You don't have to you know, knock out all of your personas at once, um, but it, they become a really helpful tool in figuring out how do we actually put really personalized, meaningful information out there that's going to help somebody um, you know, make a, a better career decision. So, oh, yep, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, so, you know, really what we're, what we're trying to, to get at is understanding the target audience at a really deep level, right? Knowing their motivators, um, knowing how they live, how they consume information, all of, all of those pieces, that that's really kind of at the, at the heart of what you need to do in order to then be able to kind of test out messaging um, that you put in each of those different touch points, those 14 to 18 touch points, see the results that you get um, in terms of growing your pipeline, garnering applications, getting productive hires, right? You start to learn over time what's actually working to influence the decision-making process, um, what's really impacting those, those micro moments, and then you you can optimize that over time as you go because as as i said you know everything is trackable today and so we truly are able to um you know kind of test as we go put messaging out there seeing what's what is working what isn't working and what's actually creating um action so you know not having to kind of be in the the world anymore of what everyone used to joke around about is like spray and pray you don't have to spread your messaging as far and wide as possible to find lisa um, or to figure out what messaging is really resonating with her tech allows us to to really, really hyper, hyper focus on, on finding people um, find, and putting information in front of them and seeing whether or not they are kind of taking the actions and doing things that let us know that that information is useful. So companies aren't wasting money um, with put it, with attracting candidates that aren't their target audience this way. Um, they're maximizing their recruiters time because recruiters aren't having to sift through piles and piles of resumes or candidates that, that don't meet the, the criteria. Um, so it's really kind of come a, a long way in terms of being able to um, impact kind of these, these micro moments, right? Everyone talks a lot about programmatic media today. We have Symphony Talent has media cloud, um, but really being able to take advantage of that um, type of technology is a way to be able to hyper focus and hyper target those candidates and then make sure that you're putting the right content in front of them and test that as you go and you know see if it's if it's working. And if we're doing our jobs well, right and we're we're telling the story well, um, then in the end, what's going to come out of that, hopefully, is that you will have built a really great candidate. Uh, experience it's going to set you apart but again it's also going to save you money because it's not that spray and pray kind of approach um you know you might actually end up reducing your app your application flow and so that's going to make your overall process more efficient um, the more efficient your recruiting process comes you know that's going to lead to an even better candidate experience which will positively impact your brand um, and ultimately i mean the overall goal is that it may even improve your ability to hire um, quality talent right talent that is more of a match on both sides that you are a match for them um, and and vice versa, and then hopefully retaining people because the people that are actually coming in the door are walking in already more connected. They better understand the organization. They're already more connected to, to you as an employer. So the micro moments from a candidate perspective is really fascinating. Well, and I think, Shannon, you brought up some great points, which is, uh, and we, um, you know, we wanted to, to emphasize that, that, that it's um, all of these steps certainly influence that that initial step of the process and the you know that 
those decisions to even start to engage with your organization. But ultimately, it goes beyond that as well. There's so many benefits to the organization by really bringing in and attracting and identifying and and um, and, and sourcing the the people who are most likely to to be the right fit and most right. qualified for your, for your role. So certainly, a, you know, a benefit to the organization as a whole and the talent acquisition team specifically um to to have that targeted approach so i couldn't agree more um and then we want to you know sort of taking that back up to the to larger level as well when we think about putting that into perspective and we think about the messaging we think about the branding um and and um what the person is experiencing and what as you as an organization want to communicate to to candidates of course that occurs again and again and again throughout this process so um it's important to have that consistency for it to be a very clear linkage to your organizational values and and really resonating what your culture is all about that's certainly what people are looking for the thing is this you know, is this the right place for me? Is this the right opportunity for me? As we said earlier, it's not not only, it goes beyond, is this just the right job for me? Um, and that really is the beginning of their employee experience. So the candidate experience absolutely is, is foundational to the type of experience they're gonna have once they join your organization. So when we think of that end-to-end -end process, and again, in the future as they make a decision and and evaluate and reflect and um and connect with other people about is this still the right place for me is this still where i want to be so everything from the the um, recruiting process um uh, from attracting engaging hiring to as you onboard them that important transition um, as they get to learn your culture and you help to make them successful in their role. Um, and also, I think one thing we've also seen um, from our clients at Cornerstone is it's never too early to talk about career opportunities with your new hires. And in, in you know, years ago, that may have been seen as, well, just let them get settled in the role that they're in before you talk about the next opportunity. Not that necessarily that that wants that you want to rush that, but it helps to solidify that you have um, a culture of learning, a culture of growth and development, that you are investing in your your um, your workforce, and that once again lays that that sound foundation for for how you're engaging those new hires. So it goes just end to end from the first time they ever come in contact with your organization. To well into when um, they are um, at your organization and thriving and and being productive, so um, those messages will still resonate with them. So Shannon, do you want to talk, just give um, an overview of some of the things that we've talked about today and some important takeaways that we want um, the audience to have for today? Yeah, absolutely. When you when you think about kind of these these moments that matter and these micro moments at the at the highest level, whether we're talking about someone who's joined the organization already and they're an a new hire or they're a tenured employee or someone who's just thinking about joining the organization, um, candidates and employees expect today, I don't even want to say they want, they expect today a very personalized and what we would almost call kind of a continuous career experience to where you are always learning about them, always re-engaging them, always ensuring that there is a level of connection um, and that it continues to be a match for, for both parties and involved in, in moving forward. Um, and while that sounds like a daunting task, luckily, um, modern tech has created efficiencies for us to really be able to, to do this 
especially within um, the, the recruitment and the talent marketing um, space around talent acquisition, the ability to be able to find um, and target people, the, the ability to be able to personalize the information um, that is going in front of target audiences from your career website, from email marketing, et cetera. It's really become um, very sophisticated and advanced and you can leverage modern technology to do, do a lot of the heavy lifting that it requires to provide a very relevant and personalized experience. Um, and there's there's a very positive impact um, on your conversion rates and you know ultimately on your retention rates by putting in this kind of investment and understanding these micro moments and trying to ensure that your audiences, whether it's candidates or employees, are having positive experiences in these micro moments and they're being given the information that they need to make the decisions that fit their situations at that time. Um, so it's it's worth the investment to kind of think at it, think about it through this lens. So hopefully this was useful um, and puts a little bit of a different spin on how you think about the candidate or the employee experience. Um, but we've got some time for, for questions if anyone wants to post questions in the uh, questions module here. Great. Thank you so much, Shannon and Jennifer. So we have about um, 20 minutes left, actually, so we should be able to get through all the questions. So please continue to share questions uh, in the panel to your right if you have them. Um, but to start us off, um, this question can go to either of you, but I think maybe Shannon, you discussed this uh, in part of your presentation. How do you best determine source uh, given the many touch points uh, without, throughout the entire process? So the, the easiest way to answer this is it really all comes down to tracking. Um, there are there are capabilities that, that exist, um, you know, from a tech perspective. If you work with uh, an agency partner or if you work with media, your own internal um, marketing team, um, you can apply what are called kind of tracking tags to just about everything that you do. Um, and I like to describe them in a very layman's kind of way. Think about tracking tags as bookends. Um, you know, that there's there's one end on, on the front, there's one on the back. And so when somebody comes in through whatever doorway um, that they're kind of recognized at coming in and that starts the tracking process. And then every book, so to speak, or touch point along the way in between those two bookends um, continues to be tracked. And so you know like every step that the person is taking um, when they go uh, between say your media, your site, et cetera. Um, and then there is a bookend at the end when that person takes action. Um, and they apply and you're able to kind of close those two things and track that full path um, to see where did they where did they come in where did they go um, and then ultimately you know what was the last thing that they did before they applied um, but it's it is really important to be able to get to use this kind of technology and use this kind of tracking on what you do today one to like maximize your spend um, but it's also it's also really important um, in terms of being able to look at your results um, in a in a um, I guess holistic way, meaning that if all you're ever looking at is kind of the last thing that somebody did before they applied and you're not looking at the full path, not only are you missing all of those touch points that might may or may not have been influential, right, in someone's decision to kind of continue to move them along, but it also you also don't have a really good understanding of where you should be investing your money. So not just where you should be putting your messaging, but actually investing your money. So yes, you know, an Indeed sponsored post as an example might be the last thing that somebody clicked on before they submitted an application. But if you don't have the technology that shows you that they actually saw, you know, three different pages on your career website and here were the pages that they saw and they also interacted with an Instagram post and a Facebook post and here's what those messages were about, you may never have gotten to that application had all of those other touch points not happened and been positively influential. And so you might decide, you know what, our team's not gonna spend any time and energy on social media because we're not getting any applications out of it. And that might be true if you're only looking at it from a last touch perspective, but it's not true if you look at it from the full path. And if you take something out of your path that actually resulted down the line in somebody applying, you could actually mess up the whole dynamic. So 
you know, it's all about tracking tags um, and just making sure that everything that you are doing from a media and a website um, and an email marketing perspective um, is all tracked uh, so that you're able to really see that full picture. Awesome. Yeah, I think that answered our next question as well about tracking uh, touch points in a scalable way. Um, so well, there you speak. go. I was efficient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next question is, um, what do you believe are some of the technologies that you mentioned that technology uh, plays an integral role in tracking um, all these different touch points? So which specifically, what kind of technology should people be leveraging to do this the best way? And if you can offer any advice on how, um, if there, someone is trying to get that technology, how would they uh, kind of get that buy-in from their executives um, for it as well? Do you want me to take that one? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sure. Um, sure. So the place to always start um, is really again to kind of understand what problems you're trying trying to solve for, what what needs you have, um, but really going out and taking a look at the robust talent marketing systems that are that are out there today. Um, so systems that enable you to do trackable kind of programmatic media um, that enable you to have uh, personalization built into your website um, that have um, connections to CRM so that you can capture um, information about candidates as they're as they're interacting um, with with your um, site that you're able to capture kind of basic information, pipeline that data, um, and that you've got more of the sophisticated kind of email marketing capabilities that are out there today, um, not just kind of basic job alerts, but really being able to do things like drip campaigns, either through email or SMS, um, that are really personalized. If you don't know what a drip campaign is, it's really just kind of a, a pre-scheduled sequence of messages that would go out to somebody um, so that you don't have to, to constantly manually be going in and, and sending email marketing campaigns. Um, that's really, I would, I would look for systems that kind of have all of those together. Um, and that way, if you're able to find systems that have all of those together, um, and they've got analytics that are connected kind of throughout, um, that's really giving you all of those upfront pieces um, that you want to be able to, one, provide experiences through, but to be able to track, um, you know, before you get to that, that actual application or that ATS um, part of the equation. Um, and I think in terms of, of getting buy-in from, from leadership, a lot of what we cover today and just really understanding modern expectations of candidates and employees today, um, and truly in order to be able to, at the end of the day, provide a really relevant and personalized experience, there, there isn't a way to really do that manually. Um, you've got to be able to have sophisticated technology to, to be able to deliver on that, of which it exists today. So I think one, just explaining the, the realities around expectations for the audience, but then two, some of that, what's in it for the company um, that we had talked about in the, the webinar um, is what I would, would emphasize again in kind of selling this internally, um, that you know, what the company is going to get out of that, hopefully, is actual lower costs because you're able to better target your, your messaging. You're not going to be doing spray and pray. You should be able to sp save money um, because you've got a much more targeted approach. Um, so maybe that will help kind of self-fund some of the investments in, in technology. Um, the overall efficiencies that you gain um, in terms of how your recruiters are actually spending their time um, and maybe even how their sourcers are spending their time. So there are efficiencies that, that make this worth it, um, as well as the positive impact to the brand. Um, so I think those are some of the business selling points that I would make internally in trying to sell that kind of technology up the chain. And Shannon, I'll, I'll add on a little bit more to that as well, because you've already alluded to this, but to, to regarding the question of getting, you know, senior um, buy-in, um, you know, today more than ever, it's important to have the data to back up all the things that you just mentioned, Shannon, around efficiency and costs and, and value. Um, and 
that in and of itself is really also where the necessity for the right technology comes into play. In other words, um, you know, you want a good tool that has, uh, it, it makes it very easy for you to look at those reports and run some analytics um, that really show the value of, of um, enhancing the process with the right tools and technology and resources. Um, because at the end of the day, that's certainly what sort of makes the case for you um, at the executive level. So it's um, an important part of and should be something that you would, you know, really seek out in any solution that you look look at and review is that you'll have the the data um, and the ability to do some analytics along with it to um, track the effectiveness and, and efficiency of your whole process. Right, so it really becomes a kind of a self-optimizing machine. <laughs> mm -hmm, absolutely. Great. Cool. So we have um, a bunch of questions that kind of align together, and I think um, each of you will have a kind of unique perspective here. So if you're if someone's trying to get started with creating a candidate profile or persona, um, where should they really begin with that process? And most importantly, um, how do you take care to eliminate bias or kind of avoid any uh, discrimination concerns during that process? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the, the ways that we go about developing personas um, is actually I'll cover two. One, we we want to look at in working with the, the organization, looking at kind of existing employees of, of course, um, to be able to see, you know, what are what were the motivating factors um, that brought them into the organization? Um, what were the places they consumed information? What were what were the influencers in terms of what was it about the company that made them feel like this was somewhere that they that they wanted to be? Um, but then it's also really important to understand your workforce planning, right? And so the kind of skills that that you need um, go, going forward for the for your organization for the jobs you're going to be looking to fill in the future um, and then understanding kind of where that talent resides um, you know where you can find that talent from a marketing perspective etc um, understanding the the demographics in terms of the available population of, of people who have that those skills um, really starting from data from your existing employees as well as um, you know, kind of forward planning. And then also working with and talking to the folks current state right now in your organization who are doing the sourcing and doing the recruiting. So right now, your team who is sourcing the, the candidates to say, yes, this is somebody that we, we should consider um, doing the proactive sourcing as well as recruiters that are, that are looking at the resumes that are doing interviewing, that are analyzing folks and getting their input around um, you know, who, who it is, what makes somebody stand out, like what are those, um, what are those, t those factors, I guess you would then put into a persona that helps somebody stand out. Those are, those are the areas that we tend to go to, um, to look for the data to start to, to consolidate that into, into a persona. Um, but I think the the question around bias is is really important, which is why you don't always just look at your existing um, employee base. Um, and really, you're kind of starting from the position of skills and then going out and looking at the data that exists around who who possesses these skills and where do those skill sets reside and kind of going from there um, to, to build out the persona that way. The other thing I, I'd quickly add on there is that, um, again, just sort of taking us back to some of the things mentioned at the beginning of the webinar and the type of uh, sort of labor market that we're in right now. And this will be interesting to see how it evolves. Um, I'm not sure anyone really has the answer right now. But when you think of traditionally how we've, um, how talent acquisition has sort of you know, been structured, how we create job descriptions and job postings, and they're very heavy on experience and skills, qualifications, and things like that. Um, and that certainly has, has started to change. Not that that's not important anymore, but um, if the, the mindset of employers, of hiring managers may change to the extent of, um, if I'm not finding a person, or if it's taking me too long to find a person, and again, all these tools that we've talked about today 
should certainly help with, again, because we have almost full employment in our workplace. So really finding the right person um, does take a particular, you know, um, effort and skill and really reaching out. And again, for them, as we've said, used to, you know, people would, you know, come to the job. Now the jobs are coming to them. That's the whole idea is that that they be nudged or prompted or, or you know, that it, it appear for them and create some interest for them. So that's a huge move um, and, and advancement. And again, as we've said, as Shannon and I have said, technology allows us to do that. But there also may be a mindset um, change, which I think might be reflected in the personas of what is um, necessary for this person to learn, to perhaps come in at a certain level, but develop within maybe the first 12 months to a level that we may need them to be. There's an investment that companies may be necessary for them or certainly that they want to make um, and to revisit some of um, what they consider to be sort of a hard and, and fast uh, requirement and how much um, might they have to work to literally close the gaps that we're seeing in the workforce. So it'll be interesting to see again how this um, how we balance um, that need with with um, the patterns that we're seeing in the workforce today. Great, thank you both for such uh, really thoughtful and thorough answers for everybody today. It seems like I believe we got through most of the questions and um, at least we're able to com combine a few because there are some common themes throughout. Um, so just a reminder that there will be a full recording of the webinar uh, sent to all of you tomorrow. Um, additionally, uh, we'll be sending the slide deck as well. But um, so thank you all for your great questions. But before we wrap up, uh, I just want to share a few places where we can keep this conversation going on candid experience um, with each of us uh, here at Smashfly, Symphony Talent, and Cornerstone. So first, uh, Transform, the only recruitment marketing conference for TA rebels uh, and change makers, especially coming back to Boston this June, the 2nd through the 4th. So as a webinar registrant, you'll get first access to the discounted early bird rate when the registration opens up to a select group just in about a week or so. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. And we will um, we'll reach, reach out to you um, via email uh, so you can get all the information for that. And Jennifer, uh, where can we find you next? Yeah, and anyone who uh, would like to learn more about Cornerstone, of course, can find us on our website, uh, cornerstoneondemand.com. Um, our annual event um, is Cornerstone Convergence, uh, which will take place um, later in June of this year. And it is a global event um, where um, very interactive, great opportunity network um, with other folks um, at Cornerstone and clients and, 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 and prospects and to learn more about, um, um, you know, some of the things that we talked about today. So everything from recruiting to performance to learning and so forth. So would, um, if you'd like more information, please visit us uh, on our website. Awesome. Um, and then coming up at Talent Acquisition Week uh, later at the end of this month, January 28th through the 30th, um, both Symphony Talent and Smashfly together, um, we will be at TA Week in San Francisco. Uh, we are executive sponsors of the conference this year, um, and we're unveiling a live exhibit um, that aligns to our topic today, which we're calling Moments That Matter. Um, it's an experiential exhibit, which uh, I personally helped to curate, um, as well as some of my, my colleagues, um, where we put together an experience to allow TA leaders to walk through um, these moment, moments that matter that we talked through today so that you can experience um, what the candidates experience. So we feature over 100 different data points um, and quotes from industry experts, from practitioners, um, from our research on Fortune 500 brands. Um, you'll have access to some of our research and eBooks on this. We're gonna have some of our subject matter experts from uh, the organization there. Um, so go to symphonytalent.com uh, right at the top of the site. Um, you can learn more about the exhibit. And if you're going to TA week, we hope to see you there. So thank you everybody for attending today's webinar. Um, really hope it was useful. And as we said, the slides in the webinar recording will be sent out um, shortly. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your afternoon.